welcome you to First Unity Spiritual Campus. Can you turn me on, please? Help me. Help you. Only here would that happen. So welcome to our church. We are a place that practices and lives inclusion, diversity, oneness, connection. If you are here today with a need, we see you making the decision that is your choice to focus on what you want. If you are here with any type of relationship separation, whether it is the separation you feel from yourself or from someone else. This is the place for you. If you are divorced, this is the place where both of you can still come. I like that too. If you are a person, regardless of the color of your skin, both externally and internally, this is the space that you can call your home. We are unity. We are more than just these walls. We are a teaching that allows people to learn how to think for themselves. My request of you today is that you forget about time. You put your clocks over to the side to live right now in the now to just immerse yourself in this space, knowing you are right where you are supposed to be. And you are God's beloved with whom God is well pleased. And where is there a greater space that you can hold with people of greatness than this space? We honor you, we bless you, and we appreciate you. And on Friendship Sunday, I give thanks that all of you are my sacred friends. Thank you for being here. And now welcome our wonderful team, our beautiful singers.
like it was just yesterday. So I feel like living. I feel like living. I got a reason to say. Gonna rise up, sing, and throw my troubles away. Cause it's a brand new day. Brand new day. Sing along. Yesterday, so I feel like living. I feel like living. I got a reason to sing. Gonna rise up, sing, and throw my troubles away. Cause it's a brand new day. I said, I'm gonna rise up, sing, and throw my troubles away. Cause it's a brand new day. Gonna do. Let's go. Yeah, okay. we're gonna do it. Song written by Temple Hayes and was it Christine? Somebody. Mm -hmm. Here we are in God's grace, seeing love. Let it go at the door. Don't hold on anymore. Changing times, new and old. Moving forward, brave and bold. Welcome to this place of love and life. One presence, one power. Welcome to this place. someone lift up get up reach out to somebody and say you're looking so great these days you look so wonderful you're looking better all the time oh love you And just say with me, you know, this unity stuff, this unity stuff, it really works. Yeah. And all today, the decision that we make today is a decision to see how great God is. You know, God is greater than anything that you've been talking about. So, here we go. And the universe is just saying, just tell me. Here I am, surrender. It's time to do great things. Yes? Here we are, far too hard. Knowing now is where we start. Know the truth that set you free. Life's been waiting for you and me. Welcome to this place of loving life. One presence, one power. Welcome to this place of loving life. 
And so part of friendship is honoring and recognizing our history. Our history does not define us, but yet it describes us. And we give thanks for our sacred friends, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, that created this wonderful movement we call Unity. Let's affirm together our invocation. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit, and thy divine wisdom. Now we raise our mortal limitations and from thy pure substance of love bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. And that is our prayer. And the way that we do that by way of community is we live our mission and our vision. And you may share that with me if you like. We inspire, ignite, and invigorate the spirit within. And our greater vision for us and for our community and our world, we envision a world that embraces, embodies, and expresses unity. What a world that will be, yes? As we create today our bridge to our mission. Our YFM is taking this Sunday off intentionally, giving our wonderful YFM teachers a day off during the summer. Let us acknowledge them and all their work that they did. Steven Krugler was here. He stayed with us 24 hours. He sends his love and his energy, and he loves you and holds the Christ consciousness for you. We have every Sunday at 11 o'clock a meditation led in 301 by our licensed unity teachers. It's always a nice time to take 15 minutes and immerse yourself in that energy field, wholeness of quiet, of solitude. We also have a meditation this evening led by Reverend Stephen Cosmina, our minister here that leads the classes, spiritual education. And every Sunday at 6 p.m., he offers that program. We're delighted. Yes, we love Reverend Stephen. Every Wednesday, because we are a teaching and healing model of thought, of principle, we offer a setting specifically towards healing and revealing. And it's Wednesday night at 6 p.m. This week, the meditation will be led by Reverend Helen Hornaday and by the wonderful bowls of Kat Von Frank. And so um, it's a wonderful gathering and we thank everybody, and we thank Sandy Hulan for her involvement in that program. It's a beautiful thing. And Reiki healing masters, energy workers, um, people from several different healing modalities come. It's the space that don't come unless you want to be changed. How's that? I'm just seeing if you're listening. So, <laughs> I am the platform leader today, and I'm taking it very seriously. How am I, am I doing all right? <laughs> so anyway, so there we go with that. And so, one of, one of our great leaders here, long-term member of First Unity, is Linda McLeod. And Linda heads up with the leadership team, our chaplain program. She also is director of YFM of our youth department and she's going to read the Daily Word today. Let's give Linda a warm welcome. Hello. Before I get started, I'm going to talk about Spirit Expressing. Spirit Expressing is a seven-week program that we offer here. It's an opportunity to explore uh, unity teaching, to share with friends and families and neighbors, we open our homes here at the church. I came to Unity some number of years ago, over 20, and my first time here was Spirit Expressing, and they were talking seven religions that believe in one God, and I always felt that there was something missing in my teaching that 
I needed more. And that opportunity came by being involved in that program and really understanding world religions and becoming more spiritual and learning to make friends, have friends, and make long-term partnerships here. Uh, have friends that I met at that very first Spirit Express and we're still friends. And it's an opportunity to just explore being you. Thank you. Daily word. Friendship. I am rich in friends. A friend is a precious gift. We laugh and we cry with friends. We support them, love them, share their joy. They do the same for us. Whether I'm wishing for a friend or cherishing the ones I have, I give thanks for all I receive in friendship. Being a good friend is one of the greatest gifts I can give. Today I express the qualities I most appreciate in a friend. This may include humor, attentive listening, and an adventurous spirit. I watch with curiosity how others respond to my friendly, friendliness, and my day is filled with joy. Ultimately, my greatest friend is spirit within me. As I allow love to express through me, new friends enter my life, and old friendship deepens. I am rich in friends. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people. Ruth 1.16. Thank you. into meditation, let's allow ourselves to relax, to just be, knowing that that one presence and that one power is here, is always here, within and around us. And as we just settle into this time, this precious time for you to feel
feel and connect with the holy moment. Allow yourself to move deep down into that sacred space in the center of your being where all that is is that connection with the divine within you and just feel that vibration of inclusion, of connection. And what do we allow? What are you willing to allow right now? What are you willing to open yourself up to allow, to be, to feel? Give yourself permission to say yes. And what are you willing to receive? as we open our arms and our hearts to receive all the great good that is everywhere around us? Are you willing to receive? And accepting. I accept. accept. I accept I am the light. I accept that I am whole and healthy. I accept that I am lovable and loving. I accept the wisdom of the universe. I accept prosperity in every area of my life. So feel these words as your own words. And I invite you to accept them. And I believe what do you believe right now? We've had different beliefs throughout our lifetime. What is your belief right now? I believe that we are one. There is no separation. The universe is inclusive. And we have everything that we need. So just for a moment, allow yourself to allow, to receive, to accept, and to believe whatever it is that you do in all of this and feel with all of this, you, no one else, your holy self, the divinity within you. So I give great thanks that we are all together as divine beings in this divine room. And just so it is.
Hi. Hello. Morning. Do you recognize who this is from before? Before and before. Russell Fox from Orlando. From Orlando. It's so great Orlando. to have you with us. It's great being here. Thank I love you. being here. Another warm welcome for Russell Fox. And good morning and namaste. Hey, um, I always take some time when I pick songs because I, I am a total believer. I am a new thoughter for 20 years. And um, I, I love the message, and uh, I've always enjoyed Temple. Um, she rocks for me. Um, so uh, I picked two songs. There are two perspectives on God. And, and this one is God speaking to us. The other one will be us speaking to God. So um, beautiful song. It's called You Are Loved.
Yeah. You are loved. And that's Kunte's favorite song, just saying. You are loved. Thank you very much, Russell Fox. You may ask me what the monk said when he went to the hot dog stand. Thank you, yes. Well, when the monk got to the hot dog stand, what he said is, make me one with everything. And and, and we laugh about that because it, it's so simple to understand, you see. Everything was there in the containers and all the attendant had to do was just respond to the request, make me one with everything. But on the spiritual quest, as a student of new thought, of unity, of science of mind, of these travels that we have, make me one with everything is beautiful in terminology. It is more complex in practice. Make me one with everything. Many a person has come through these doors, has come through new thought doors, has come through unity places, and they get so excited about spiritual enlightenment. It's so exciting because it's just so much joy, and they start feeling better, and the pain's going away, and they start saying, I want to feel that oneness. I want to be related to everything. I want more depth. And it's likened to the story that's one of the best stories that I've ever heard that describes it, a famous movie, archetypal in nature, The Wizard of Oz. Because that's exactly what Dorothy did. Is Dorothy said, wow, is there somewhere I can go that there's no problems and there's no struggle? Is there somewhere I can go to become an enlightened person? Maybe there's somewhere over the rainbow that, that challenges aren't happening. I'm longing and I'm craving spiritual enlightenment. And what happens after that? It's the same thing that happens to so many of us. She brings into her awareness a tornado. A tornado of things that catches her off guard, of things happening that's totally out of her control. I imagine that's a place that some of you are at right now. Yes? Yes. yes, some of you are nodding your heads. The introverts are just winking their eyes. <laughs> the elbow mystics are nodding somebody else. It's <laughs> talking about you. <laughs> Tornadoes look very, very different. Tornadoes look in many different ways. People going out of your life, new people coming into your life. The job you thought you were retire at is retiring you, so you must go. All kind of different elements of the tornado. The other thing that Dorothy encounters is the bad witch. Oh, she meets that straight and first right in the front. And in that bad witchness, there's the reality that for all of us, we all have the bad witch. It's the limited beliefs that we carry. It's these ideas that we have placed upon ourselves. It's somebody told us something 30, 40 years ago or last week and we believed it. It's a limited belief. It's the bad witch reality of hanging on to some kind of belief, whether it's religiosity, whether it's about your beingness, whether it's about your possibilities or your capabilities. It's a belief system that holds us in bondage versus setting us free. The bad witch. And then, of course, for Dorothy to really connect with life, she needs to have things outside of herself to support her that become her inner wellspring. And that is the lion for courage, the scarecrow for a heart, right? No, the tin man for a heart, just seeing if you're listening. The scarecrow. <laughs> the scarecrow for what? 
mindfulness, mindfulness. So we all need, as we're walking through and changing our beliefs and seeking to know our oneness, seeking and longing to walk through some of the things we're going through, we need mindfulness. We need courage. But more importantly, we need to come from our heart. Our head is the intellect. Our heart is what creates depth. And once the heart is open with the awakened door, that heart will never close again. You can never put the lid on it because it is open and you are loved. Yes? Can you feel that energy? Yes. One of my new um, people that I'm following and learning about what he's doing uh, and also based upon the nudging of a couple of books in the mail from Richard Boggs is Carlton Pearson. Now, I've heard about Carlton Pearson many years ago, but to give you a little background about him, at one time in the 90s, as a religious minister, he had in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of the largest churches there, they had about 5,000 people a week that were coming. And one day as his tornado came in, one day, as he started becoming aware of the bad witches in his life and his limited beliefs, he started having an awakening. His heart started awakening, and he started listening to what he was telling people, people that were going to hell, and this one was wrong, and this one was right, and telling people every week, you're just sinners, and, you know, all this stuff. And he's like, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying, and I, I don't believe this stuff anymore. It doesn't work for me anymore. And, of course, I'm sure he got excited and thought that, you know, because he was part of an evolving God, I'm confident that he probably thought his congregation would too. So when he started talking about the gospel of inclusion, which is one of his books, he was so surprised that about 4,000 people over time walked out and left him with the few remaining because they wanted to stay with those bad witches. I'll get you, my little pretty. I'll get you. Don't you be learning new stuff around here. I'll get you. And he refused to do it. He refused to do it. This stuff is in our culture. It's in our old system of DNA. He wasn't willing to go backwards. He was willing to move forward. The religiosity that he had known and been preaching all those years did not work for him anymore. And so he found a scripture that I wanted to share with you from Hebrews. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites and the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, and God permitting we will do so. How exciting is that? It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. Isn't that exciting? We are moving beyond just an elementary idea of the Christ consciousness. Are you with me? And that is what we're talking about, is we're literally talking about the teaching of which we are a part of every week. He goes on to say, Jesus wouldn't have wanted people to just always be talking about Jesus. That was not his mission. His mission was to teach people that everybody was the Christ. Consciousness. The consciousness. He was not the exception. He was an example he would not be likened to having everybody worship him today because he would know that worshiping means disempowering you. Right? Yes. Worshiping means disempowering you. And that's what Dorothy had to learn with her red slippers is she had the power all the time. <laughs> the power was always with her. The power was always there. 
The beautiful follow the yellow brick road was her following her own inner guidance and leadership so she may become the Christ consciousness. For enlightenment, all of us want to know that we are the ones that the Christ is and expresses as. Yes? And so that's the distinction of that is learning to do that. Jesus said, greater things can I do, greater things shall you also do. For those of you that learn to allow the Father to come through you, the consciousness to express through you, not waiting on somebody to come around and do it for you, not hoping and praying one day you'll hear a messenger give you words of wisdom, but that you will understand you are the wisdom. You are the consciousness. I liken it, I like to compare things to how we drive a car, I guess because it took me so long to learn how to drive one. (laughs) But I liken it to that with religiosity and being able to move forward is the shifts on the car. And some people stay in park. They just stay in park. They they come to um, a new thought community and they go, "Well, well, the talk was pretty good, don't you think? And the music was really good. Uh, well, the music wasn't that great. Uh, well, the talk was better this Sunday, don't you think? Just park. Park, still looking for externals. Still looking for something to give that, that nudge. But just parked. And then there's the people that are in reverse. <laughs> and they're the people, obviously, with the laughter. There's no one here today that's in reverse. <laughs> There's the people in reverse, and they are the people that they hold on. They defend part of their religiosity that never worked for them. They hang on to a dogma that never satisfied them. They have one leg in and one leg out, but they're going reverse. Because if you're not moving forward, the paradigm is such that you will be moving backwards because life is only a forward motion. Yes? And so going in reverse, hanging on to the past, defending how it used to be, yes? And then there's people that are neutral. Just whoever they're hanging out with, they kind of adopt their enlightenment or lack of. They're just kind of, they're waiting to see who really wins out in all this. (laughs) They're waiting for people to say, all unity people are in heaven. (laughs) Oh, well. Uh, (laughs) and then there's the drivers the drivers are the people that are people like you that are here they're the people that understand that you have a mission that the bridge to your mission is one of substance that that you are here to be a light worker that you are here to exemplify the Christ teachings that you're not looking for something outside of yourself to save or fix you but that you are willing to step out there in life Those are the people that are in the drive position, like Rob Wohan, who's here today, that's been making a stand for the handicapped. Stand up, Rob. Let us give you some unity love. He's been all over the news. He's all over the papers. He's on ABC World News of taking a stand for the handicapped parking places at Starbucks. And he said, you know, Reverend Temple, it's not about me. I said, you know, I dare to differ because I'm sure that's happened to many people that that experience and that encounter, but you allowed yourself to be the one. So it was about you and that you are the one that said yes. There was a Sunday school teacher who asked her students, she said, how many points are on a compass? And the little boy said, five. And she said, five? He said, "Uh uh-huh, east, west, north, south, and where I am. (laughs) Where I am, where you are, with what you're doing is what your mission is. Here's Jesus' mission statement. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. We're not talking about physical sight. We're talking about inward seeing. To set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus knew his mission. What is your mission? What are you willing to stand for? 
There's some of us this afternoon at 1.30 that we're doing a panel because we're standing for a feeling healing dialogue about racism. What are you standing for in your life? Simran Singh came through here a couple of years ago. And while she was here, she was sharing an amazing story that when she and her sister were little, her parents from India moved her family to a little small town in South Carolina. That's your first clue. Yeah. <laughs> and so these little girls wanted to be in the pageant and the local beauty thing, contest. And so here they were, and they were doing great, and they were very talented. And during intermission, the mistress of ceremonies stood up and said, Honeys, you two girls, you're doing a really great job, but we're going to have to disqualify you. I'm sorry to tell you, we only have two selections. We get a white winner and a black winner. We don't have a category for brown people. And Simran Singh said that she went behind the curtain during that day, and she never came out for 30, 35 years. But her sister, you just heard about, because two weeks ago, she approved of releasing all the Confederate flags, because her name is Nikki Haley, and she is the governor of the state of South Carolina. from tragedy to triumph, that she couldn't be in a beauty contest, but now she's the governor of the same state. God had a plan for her life, and her tornado led her in the direction that through the depth of her life, her pain, her awareness, her energy, the things she's faced or yet to face, led her to a place that when she stands before a governing body and she says, we are all one, don't you think that she really knows what that means and that that's coming from the depth of her being in that sacred enlightenment, what she's possible to do? In closing, there was a city man that bought some property near the farmer. And so one day he goes up to the farmer and he says, where's the property line on this property. And the farmer said, are you talking about owning or are you talking about mowing? <laughs> so what I'm talking about today is owning. Owning who you are with your mission. Owning what you were birthed to be. Owning where you are right now with your compass of what you stand for, whether it's on social media, that you come from a place of peace and not reactiveness, but you're guiding people in directionally in ways about truth, about possibilities, because we are at a critical mass in our world, and we are at a time that no one needs to be quiet but that everybody stands for the truth because united we stand and divided we are merely a distraction. We are one. Thank you for being here today. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. As our ushers are coming forward, I want to know who's been praying for rain. <laughs> we would like you on our prosperity team. We would like you to pray for the state of California. I want to just say thank you, God for the many blessings that we have here at First Unity. Thank you, God, for the incredible people that come here. Thank you, God, for the healing and revealings that happen all the time, every day, if someone is willing to allow it to unfold. I want to thank you, God, for the energy and the excitement. I want to thank you for the people that invite people here, knowing that unity is life-changing. It is transformational. It is the message of right now, not tomorrow. Yes.
Let us say our statement together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. I hear it every single day. Oh.
Russell Fox. Sunday for all of you that bring friends. If you're here for the first time today, all we're going to ask you to do is raise your hand. If you'd raise your hand, please. We welcome you. There's number in the back. We welcome you here. Keep your hands up, if you will, to allow the ushers to see you. And also, those of you that brought your friend, could you lift your hand up? If you are someone that brought a friend, you get a rose because we believe the unity teaching helps through the process of life. With every rose and the beauty of God, there are thorns. And unity brings people through those tornadoes as they're following the yellow brick road, just to tie all that in again for you. So we greet you and we welcome you. And Marika, she's our hostess today. Welcome back from Holland, Marika. <laughs> she's here. And she's going to uh, meet you at the welcome lobby and give all of our new guests today a welcome a tour, campus tour, and a welcome gift. As you can see, she's wearing the purple stole. Will our other chaplains stand, please? There's Lee and Kay and also every Pam and our other friends here, our wonderful chaplains. Our chaplains are here to pray for you. We also have a prayer team led by Diane, so please take time. Don't leave today with something you want to release. Fill out a prayer request and leave it here and let it go. Let it move on back to the nothingness from whence it came. Yes, absolutely. So, Spirit Expressing signups are in Friendship Hall today. Please get involved. You will be amazed. It will move you from park or reverse to driving forward. It's a wonderful program. We also have a concert scheduled for next Sunday evening. It's done all over the United States. It's called the Breakthrough Concert. And I believe we have, whoo, somebody's already having a breakthrough. Yes, a big old breakthrough. That's uh, Mick and Tess over there. They're having their breakthrough. <laughs> And so uh, for, for men and women, it's a wonderful program designed for literally changing your life. So they're going to be in the lobby after the service, and we're grateful to have them as part of our community. A number of you uh, really love the teachings of Eric Butterworth. Uh, last Sunday, Reverend Helen Hornaday is starting a class on Monday night, Discover the Power Within. We had like 41 classes and eight workshops last month here at First Unity Spiritual Campus. So... We are, we are doing God's work in, in many, many, many ways. And speaking of that, uh, this coming Saturday, the place is going to be really vibrating. So I ask them at the 9.30 to start praying for clear weather. It's already working. Um, because the new Encore, Encore Boutique Thrift Shop, will be opening on Saturday. It's their grand opening. Please come out and support them. And then to be revealed... Encore 2, that's going to be high-end furniture and collectibles. So please spend the day at the campus. The Spice Routes is going to be open also. Uh, for Encore uh, Boutique Thrift Shop, uh, we need men energy. You know, we, it's raining men, so there you go. What a perfect day or week it's been, raining men, hallelujah. Um, we need men's ties, clothing, belts. Shoes, men just bring it on. <laughs> okay, we need that and we need women's hats. Uh, the things you can remember on a Sunday are amazing. All right, so 
Wow, give yourself a great big standing ovation. We thank you for coming today. Thank you for being here. Really love and appreciate you. affirm together our unity prayer. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God is good? All the time. And all the time? God is good. And if you want to make it a perfect Sunday, we have cat adoptions, <laughs> and we'd love to see you at 1.30. God bless you, everyone. Have a tremendous week.